Merry Christmas, everybody. I want to share with you today some thoughts that come from two books. One is the book, the Bible. It's literally what it means. It's the story uh, of God and all of creation. It's like his autobiography. It contains the law, talks about how he created the world, talks about why he created the world. It actually has multiple laws, many different covenants. It's both complex and incredibly simple and understandable. It helps us understand who he is. The second book is Pilgrim's Progress. This was my favorite Christmas present that my family got for me. This particular version version was from 1939. It was written much earlier than that by a guy named John Bunyan, and I believe it's the second most published book in history. And it's this amazing allegory of the Christian life. And I was reading uh, the, the first chapter with my family as we're going to be working our way through it. Um, and it's the story of a man, they call him Christian, this man who he's, he's given a book this book and in the book he reads about his fate that apart from god he's he's doomed he's going to he's going to die but he doesn't know where to go he's he's just in this desperate condition his family's trying to calm him down his wife and his kids uh, and at one day, one day he's walking in the fields and he meets this, this man named Evangelist who uh, points the direction for him. He doesn't know where to go. And Evangelist says, well, you need to start heading this way towards the wicket gate. And when you get there, uh, you'll be told what to do. And it's the story of the Christian life and how he you know, it feels his sin. He's, he's, he's broken over it. He's desperate for it. Somebody comes alongside it, it helps him and points him the way to life. And it's this interesting story. I'm just going to read one paragraph for you. After Evangelist tells him where to go, he says, keep that light in your eye, the light, the, the literally guiding light of where, where he's supposed to go. It said, and go straight up to it, so you shall see the gate at which when you knock, it should be told you what you are to do. Then I saw in my dream that Christian, for that was his name, set off to run. Now he had not gone far from his own door when his wife and his young ones who saw him gave a loud wail to beg of him to come back. But the man put his hands to his ears and he ran off with the cry, life, life. And he goes and he takes off. And I just thought, man, there is something inside of us. When God has called us and put it in our soul to come to him, that, that we will sacrifice everything else for that life. You know, physically, all living things, we have this instinctual reaction to, to live, to breathe. We call it survival instincts. Everything that's living uh, is searching for this, this degree of homeostasis, which is like a, a stable environment for life. Because we were designed to live, and our souls were designed to live too. And when God has made that call to us, that is our response. It ought to be our response. Reading that actually made me think of Ezekiel 16. Metaphorically, God sees Jerusalem, the, the heart of, it, of his people, when they were just in infancy. Again, it's metaphorical. But he he sees them and they're just like a baby that is just there and is dying. And he calls them, he says, live, live. And they grow and develop. And it's just the story of God uh, creating his people to be close to him. And when God calls us to live, our response should be life, should be to, to run to it. And, and just like a, a tree, when it's, when it's planted and is given the energy to grow and it sprouts up and comes up, that is our response. That should be our response. Sometimes when we have been living long enough and walking long enough, and there's parts of, of the Christian journey where he, he doesn't run with his, his fingers in his ears the whole time. There's part of his journey where he forgets. And sometimes we forget, and sometimes we forget that call, and we get distracted by all different types of things. And sometimes it's, it's just our traditions or just the, the monotony of life. Maybe it's passions towards a, a job or, um, or different angst as it comes to with social or political things or whatever, and we get distracted, and we forget that call that God has made to us to live. And I just want to encourage you as we're looking to this next year, live live. And don't just have God as this theoretical thing in your life. Don't just make him some kind of academic pursuit to just know all these facts about him. He is our source of life and he has a life for you to live and to enjoy and to experience in this world as you are heading to the city where you will ultimately be with him forever. Life, life. That is who we are. That's what we do. And we are life givers in our ministries. We go to churches. We go to people. We go to, to folks digitally all around the world. And we are encouraging them to respond to that call that God has put into their heart uh, for them to live. And I want to encourage you as well. Live. 
God has life for you, and I hope that you will get to experience that to its absolute fullest this next year. God bless, and welcome to 2021.